even to this day, I just, if I'm riding an Uber alone, I'm dreading, like, who's going to show up in this car? Tonight, women sexually assaulted by their Uber driver share their stories as lawsuits filed on behalf of victims get underway. And their comments come as Uber's own reported sexual assault numbers might not tell the full story. ABC 7 News IT reporter Melanie Woodrow has the story you'll see only on 7. Hey, Mel. Stephanie and Dan, this has to do with which assaults and attempted assaults Uber is self-reporting. I interviewed two sexual assault survivors, one who lives in the Bay Area and one who was visiting San Francisco. Tonight, their stories and Uber's response. Billions of Uber rides are taken and given every day. And according to Uber's own 2019 to 2020 U.S. Safety Report, close to 4,000 sexual assaults across five categories were reported on the Uber app. These are predator drivers. I thought it would be safer to take an Uber, uh, and it was, it was not. It almost felt like the driver, he was just waiting for someone to get in the car and like a, a young girl to take advantage of. Now two women who say they were sexually assaulted by Uber drivers are sharing their experience in the hopes that Uber will change its safety practices around screening, hiring, and removing drivers from its platform. On her way to Catsit in the mission this summer, Jennifer says she took an Uber to avoid walking through the tenderloin, thinking she'd be safer. Immediately, she says her Uber driver began asking her inappropriate questions. Like, oh, do you like to party? And oh, are you having fun? And I'm getting off of work. At her destination, he offered to help with her bags. I was taking my backpack off and then hands were you know, touching me. I just kept thinking, I, I, can't, I can't believe this is happening. And I said, no, that's, that's, that's very inappropriate. That this is not, I, I no, I don't, I don't want this, I, no. Jennifer says he eventually left, but returned the next day with her cell phone that she had left in his car. A neighbor took the phone for her. She filed a police report. SFPD tells the I team the investigation remains open. At the time, it was unclear to Jennifer whether or not the driver was removed from Uber's platform. Pfeiffer Wolf attorney Rachel Abrams says Uber doesn't tell the passenger if a driver is removed from the platform unless they are in litigation and discovery. In its 2019 to 2020 U.S. safety report, Uber says the core tenets of its approach are to remove requirements of conclusivity, corroboration, and survivor credibility when determining whether to ban the accused party from Uber's app. In response to a media request, the rideshare company tells the I-team Jennifer's driver was deactivated from the platform. Uber refunded Jennifer's ride and sent her information on an Uber resources hotline, a national sexual assault hotline. I didn't imagine that that, that would happen to me because of a 10 minute Uber drive. Abrams says Uber doesn't properly screen drivers. We do know that they want to do the bare minimum because they want to get drivers. Without drivers, they don't make money. According to Uber's 2019 to 2020 U.S. safety report, sexual assault is defined as any physical or attempted physical contact that is reported to be sexual in nature and without consent. The sexual misconduct and violence taxonomy ranges from staring and asking personal questions to non-consensual penetration. But Abrams says Uber Uber's self-reported assault numbers only include five categories, non-consensual sexual penetration, non-consensual kissing of a sexual body part, non-consensual touching of a sexual body part, attempted non-consensual sexual penetration, and non-consensual kissing of a non-sexual body part. They're not reporting things that the community would want to know about. In its 2019 to 2020 U.S. safety report, Uber writes, no rider or driver is deactivated from Uber for a safety report without a human review. Uber Uber also says limiting the categories of incidents to the most severe helps us maintain a higher level of classification accuracy, reliability, and consistency with our previous report. In 2017, Alex says she was visiting San Francisco by herself when she took an Uber. Immediately, she says her driver began asking her if she had a boyfriend and if she would be his girlfriend. She says he insisted he show her around the city. I felt like I just needed to be agreeable because he is kind of he seemed kind of impulsive. Eventually driving her to Treasure Island. It was out of the way. It wasn't on the way. As she took a picture of the view, she says he took her phone to get a selfie. He actually like took a picture with me and I have that picture still. Then persisted that she sit in the front of the car. Then he reached over, grabbed me, tried to kiss me, touched my breast, and that's when I pushed him away and was like, take me back right now. No, got really angry. 
like making me feel like I had done something really, really wrong. And I think at that point I was just like in fight or flight. Alex did not report what happened. She also later realized her driver had canceled the ride. Felt really shameful about the whole thing. Just like, oh, why did this happen to me? Is this my fault? And only years later began to openly discuss it. It felt like such a big weight off my chest. Uber tells the I team Alex's driver was deactivated from the platform, though it's not clear why or when, because she didn't report the driver. Uber told the I team there are many different reasons why a driver can lose access to the platform and for privacy reasons, couldn't go into details about this driver. Alex says she had at least two other incidents with Uber drivers talking sexually during her rides, which she has reported to Uber. I got a statement like, thank you for submitting this. I think maybe one of them was refunded. Even to this day, I just, if I'm riding an Uber alone, I'm dreading like who's going to show up in this car. In an emailed statement on November 1st for an ABC 7 News report about related litigation, an Uber spokesperson wrote, quote, sexual assault is a horrific crime and we take every report of this nature very seriously. While we cannot comment on pending litigation, we are deeply committed to the safety of all users on the Uber platform. During a recent hearing, ABC 7 News attended Uber's attorney said assaults being litigated in a multi-district litigation were not preventable from Uber's point of view, a point which will be central to ongoing litigation. It tracks predators like these rapists to their platform because they can get away with it. Jennifer and Alex say they're speaking out to protect others. There needs to be more safety or like at the very least the types of people they're hiring. I want the, this kind of thing to, to happen to so many people and, and for it to just get swept under the rug. Uber says it's constantly working to identify patterns of potentially risky behavior. Uber tells ABC 7 News it aims to put out a safety report every two years. The last report was released in June of 2022, so possibly as early as this summer for the next one. Wow, thousands of reports. You have to wonder how many go underreported mm -hmm. as Alex alluded to. Right, because some women feel shameful and they don't come forward, so right. even more.